Hello, everybody. So, we've made ourselves a little bit of a mocked up world, but we don't have anything in here to do. So, let's discuss adding in some interactive objects. Interactive objects are the sort of thing that you'll find in every game, and they're a great place to get started. There's a lot of ways to do this, so this may be a little bit of a long episode, but let's go ahead and get started. What we're going to add in is simply a boombox. So, I don't have the model of a boombox, but I do have the model of a capsule. So, here's our boombox. Exciting stuff. Let's add in the audio source. And I have some music that I own. I bought licenses to it. And we're just going to use some of that. Now, by default, the Unity uh, audio source is set up for 2D. Not sure why that is, but we can bring it up to 3D like this. And I'm not going to use Doppler Shift. You can use it if you want. I, I don't like it. Well, there's definitely sound coming out of it, but we don't have any uh, reason to leave it like that. We don't want it to start. We want it to get triggered. So how do we trigger it? There's a couple of ways to trigger stuff. Let's talk about the one that Unity wants you to use, and that's the UI. So Unity has a bunch of different UI uh, elements to it, and normally you'd think of it in terms of being on screen. So if I were to create a button here and make it real big, you're like, oh, this is, you know, there's there's no way I'm going to be able to do anything now. There's a big, big ass button in the way. But you can set the canvas to be in world. Um, now you're going to want to be careful with these and turn them off when you're not using them because these are a little bit, a little bit pricey. Um, not much I can do about that. The good news is they're supported right out of the box, and you don't have to do anything complex with them. So let's put them in the can, in the capsule. Uh, stick them in the middle here. Bring the size down. Uh, and go take a look. That's too big. There we are, we've got a button. Notice that I can click on the button. I can't really see where the center of my screen is at this point. You can add a little dot in the middle if it's going to matter to you. But there's a couple of small issues with this. And a big one is that uh, when you are using in-world objects like this, all of the normal screen control stuff is still active. So if you hit right, not only will your, will your character move right, but you'll attempt to select the next rightest object. Um, so if you've got a whole bunch of objects in the game world, then you're going to select them uh, based on you moving left, right, up, down, rather than based on you pointing your, your mouse at them. Um, this is something that they've really needed to fix for a while now, but they haven't done so. So if you plan to use in-world buttons like this, then you're going to want to change these to dummy inputs, uh, which I do just by having an input named dummy. Um, show you that real quick here. Input. There, dummy. And uh, then I can just add them in here. Dummy, dummy, dummy. Actually, that one still needs to be submit. <laughs> there we are. Uh, and now it won't move around very much. That's something that you'll only run into later. Uh, but if you start to do this, that's something that you will probably will get annoyed by, and you'll have to think back and realize that that's what's causing it. Now, with that in mind, how do we actually make that button do what we need it to do? And that's easy. We have Unity events. So there is our Unity event. Bang. Uh, runtime only is fine. We'll drop our capsule in here and select the audio source and select play. There we go. Interactive object. Pretty easy stuff. Let's get rid of the canvas, though. Canvases are often not what you want, although you can make them look really cool. Uh, they're a little bit expensive, and they don't really fit in with the kind of uh, look I'm going for. What we would like to do instead, maybe trigger it on uh, when we enter into a radius. How about that? So let's get ourselves another collider. There we are. We have a collider. 
And the idea is that when we enter into this radius, it'll play. Ugh. Ugh. I can't get any closer to it. Well, that's because the collider is a physical collider. What we need to do is change it to a trigger. Now here is one thing that Unity screws up. The collider and the isTrigger method, these predate the Unity events system. So in order to use uh, the trigger, you have to actually put code into the world. Now, uh, fortunately, it's pretty simple code, so let's go ahead and build it right here on screen. I have a little empty directory called scripts. We'll create a script. I do everything in C Sharp. Uh, and let's go ahead and create something called a, uh, on trigger adapter. And the purpose of this script is that it's going to make us able to use uh, on trigger events with Unity, uh, with Unity events. So it's a trigger, and we're going to have a Unity event in here. Let's go ahead and start that up. There we go. So the way it works is you have uh, on trigger enter with a collider and on trigger exit with a collider. This stuff is uh, stuff you can find uh, just by searching Unity triggers and stuff like that. It'll show you these, these functions. I never have them memorized. I had to look them up before we started. So what do we do? Well, we want it to be uh, when we enter into the trigger, we call a Unity event. So we're going to need a Unity event. Unity events require a namespace, the events namespace. Public Unity event on trigger enter, and public Unity event on trigger exit. Now this is a bad habit of mine. Um, when I have something that gets triggered, I use a lowercase letter, and when they have something that gets triggered, they use an uppercase letter. <laughs> so this is not what I would recommend. That's just a stupid habit. Let's, let's name it something else. Uh, uh, let's just call it when. I don't like uh, having to... This is just an on-trigger enter and an on-trigger exit. All we're doing is redirecting, so it's annoying to have to rename it, but better than having it uh, indistinguishable, you know, with just a lowercase o instead of an uppercase o. And what we would like to do is call the event when trigger enter dot invoke and when trigger exit dot invoke. Easy enough, right? Let's put in a log just as well. Log entered trigger area. And not logger, uh, sorry. Uh, the debug dot log debug. Too many different languages. <laughs> there we are. All right, so now we have this and recompile. There we are. So we will drop the capsule in and select audio source play. And then we will drop the capsule in again and select audio source pause. Now let's go ahead and pull up the console just so I can see what's going on. Worked fine. Now we're actually cheating quite a bit here. Why is that? Because this will happen whenever anything enters or exits the arena. Um, what we really should do is check and see if the collider is our main character. And there are a lot of ways to do that. Uh, we have to first figure out where the collider is. Uh, okay, so the collider is on this object here. So let's just call this player. And we'll go in here and we will say if other dot uh, I think that this will work equals player uh, does not equal player then return. Now, you, what you really want to do is um, uh, use some other method like layering or checking if it's the, pl the designated player or anything like that. Uh, we'll just do this because it's real fast. We can just mock it up real quick. Still works. And now it won't trigger when we fire a bullet past or an enemy walks by or a brick falls on it. So that's a pretty good way to do it, right? You can go ahead and trigger things using a, a bounding box with the on trigger statement. 
Now, just in case you wanted to copy that down, here it is again. It's a very, very simple, simple script. It's like 10 lines. So feel free to use it and implement it yourself. It's, it's super useful, uh, and it should be what Unity does by default. It's just out outdated is why, the, is why the, it doesn't do it by default. So um, there are a lot of other options we have. For example, we could do ray casting. The way that the in-world UI works is through a raycast. That's how it knew when we were highlighting it in the middle of the screen. But we can do that manually. We can raycast and see if we hit this thing, and if we do, we can cause it to play or to pause. But, you know, this has already been 10 minutes to 11 minutes long. I think raycasting probably deserves its own episode. It's a very important part of 3D, 3D games, uh, and uh, you're going to have to learn it. So in that episode, I will teach you about raycasting and about refactoring your code because uh, we're going to implement it wrong and then we're going to implement it right. <laughs> Hope you look forward to it. Let me know if you have any questions about how things work or what you'd like to see me demonstrate. And uh, I'll see you around.